how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. In the name of God with us. Amen. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. The exact imprint of God's very being. And the word became flesh and lived among us. A beautiful arc through the readings for this morning, the morning of Christmas Day, the traditional readings for Christmas Day has taken me, in recent days, to an interesting place, to baby footprints. Now, if you were born in the 1960s or later, the imprint of your feet was likely taken within two hours after your birth. They are sweet mementos, of course, these tiny little prints, But the procedure is all about practicality and positive identification. Footprints, as it turns out, are as unique to each person as fingerprints. And if you've ever held a newborn, you know that in the post-traumatic hours after birth, their tiny fingers are clenching and unclenching. They're not holding still. They're not printable. A baby's feet are comparatively calm easier to ink and to print. Now, we couldn't secure the actual footprints of Jesus in these past weeks, so we've borrowed someone else who shall remain nameless. But the point remains, twinned and tiny, not yet able to support the weight and the bulk of the body to which they are appended. The prints on the cover of your leaflet say something, I think, about the event we are celebrating this morning. The Greek and Roman gods whose worship dominated the world into which Jesus was born were never known to be anything but beautiful and strong. One thinks of Athena springing fully formed from the forehead of Zeus, already armored in breastplate and shield, So, as the song asks, why lies he in such mean estate? What kind of a God could this possibly be? What kind of a God is born with two feet upon which it cannot yet stand? What kind of a God wets itself? What kind of a God requires another person to support its neck? What kind of a God is born with lungs as tiny as twinned strawberries, gasping for air in the cold in the moments after birth? What kind of a God would opt for such a trauma? This is the good news. This is the start of the good news. The word made flesh is God's love made human, as vulnerable as a newborn, as fragile as many 97-year-olds, and committed unalterably to the full human story. Committed unalterably to the full human story. His feet will be anointed one day by Mary of Bethany with expensive perfume. She will dry them with her hair, John's gospel will later tell us. Soon afterwards, those two feet will be pierced. His feet by then will have walked from Nazareth to Jerusalem. His feet will be dusty, sore, and calloused. In some Roman Catholic churches around the world, the very soles of Jesus' feet appear in the adornment of the ceiling. Marks of the nails, still visible in the souls to the eyes of those gazing up. The whole arrangement intended to recall the last view of his disciples, of him, 
as he ascended from the Mount of Olives after promising not to leave them orphaned. How beautiful upon the mountain, says the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of the messenger who brings peace, who announces salvation, who reminds the hopeless and the cynical and the disconsolate that God has not forgotten them. These are people living in the ruins. These are people who have been living beyond hope. And then something thrilling happens. Sentinels see a runner, the prophet tells us, a messenger sprinting over the surrounding hills. Good news! You're not alone, even when you feel most alone. Maybe the prodigal son in Jesus' parable thought the same way when he saw his father running towards him. One of the most thrilling moments in Scripture. I haven't been forgotten. God hasn't forgotten me. My misery is not the end of the story. Whether on this side of death or afterwards, God's love is never finished with me. And probably, and usually against all visible evidence, ruin and misery is not the end of the story or the ultimate meaning of your life. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. How beautiful is the message that we are not alone. How beautiful is the message that God is in the boat with you. Beautiful. The Hebrew word Isaiah has chosen to describe these feet these running feet, this message is nahwa. This does not mean pretty or cute to describe these feet. It means befitting, appropriate, living fully into a particular purpose. Peace be with you this day is the message of the messenger. And may the good news of God's particular and beautiful purposes for you, make themselves more and more apparent in this coming new year of life. May the comfort and joy of this particular day walk with you, run with you, stumble with you every day. May God's love bless you from the crown of your head to the weary soles of your feet.